Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Black Shirt Breakdown. My name is Steve Mark. I'm a staff writer inside Nebraska, and he is the Jay Foreman, our NFL veteran and former Nebraska Black Shirt. Jay, we are back once again, and this is going to be a fun one uh, to break down a class of 2024 receiver Ja'Cory Barney Jr. from Miami Palmetto High School down in Miami. Uh, Jay, uh, you obviously look at the highlights that we're going to take a look at later on in this video, but um, first, first the uh, reactions first initial thoughts of Jacory Barney Jr. Well, I mean, he, look, he's a, he's a Miami kid, you know, and uh, he can pick him up and put him down. He's competitive. He's tough, a uh, little slight in size, but you know, he goes up and makes some plays. I mean, he's a football player, you know, you know what you're going to get with a, with a true Florida kid. Um, but I, what the one thing I like, and, and I'm assuming, look, they're, they're, everybody down in Florida can run, uh, but he's out running some angles. And he and he's he goes from first gear to fifth gear very quickly, and uh, I like his run after the catch. He it's set up by his speed, uh, and then also the when he cuts in and out of you know his breaks, uh, he doesn't lose any speed. So, look, I, I, like I said, this is another addition uh, right now. Obviously, until he signs and gets here, that they're looking for speed, athletic. They can get him as big as he needs, and they want playmakers and tough football players, and so. I think it's a you know a good commitment for Nebraska, and they should be happy. A little background on Jacory: he's a four-star uh, recruit. He's a 42nd rated uh, athlete overall in Florida, and the 18th rated wide receiver in the country. So that's pretty impressive. There, it's a big time pickup. I mean, Jacory he chose Nebraska over Texas A&M and Miami. Uh, I think the day he committed, it was just kind of a two a two person race with Nebraska and Miami and. I think mm -hmm. Palmetto Palmetto High School is about ten minute drive from the University of Miami, so that was a big time get uh, for especially for Garrett McGuire, who continues right, yeah. to show that he can he can draw really talented guys to Lincoln outside of outside of his uh, state's own borders. So um, that that was really cool to see. And another thing that I think came came up big for the staff was Phil Simpson, who's a defensive quality control coach on uh, Coach Rule's staff. Um, a former coach, a, a, a former player of Coach, coach Rule at Temple, mm -hmm. um, and and Phil Simpson was, I think he was a high school coach for around ten years. He won a state championship, um, at Homestead uh, High School, and he came right. in, came in is starting his uh, college coaching career, um, with Matt Rule, and I think uh, Phil Simpson deserves kind of a, a little bit of credit here, um, getting at one of these Florida guys and um, helping Garrett McGuire out to get him. So that was that was really cool. And again, whenever you're beating programs like Miami and especially Texas A&M too um, in the SEC that kind of says something uh, so I think this is an excellent pickup uh, for the Huskers but Jay let's get into these highlights here and again from everybody watching at home you're going to see a really fast guy his acceleration like Jay talked about is impressive and also the his catching ability um, I, I like it he's a hands catcher and he comes down with some really difficult looking catches. So Jay, take it away. What are we seeing here on looks like I, I, if I remember right, this is just a straight go route and he comes down in traffic with one. Yeah, this is what you want. You want to see him to be competitive and you can see right there, he gets a good release right there. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I always say once he's even, he's leaving, but he goes up and gets the ball high points, the ball yeah. over two guys. And so that's what I like to see for him. And uh, he doesn't get uh, jammed up too much on the line of scrimmage, but his ability Here's what also people don't understand. The, the This is offensive players and defensive skill players. The ability or inability to track the ball on deep balls. It's something that they don't talk about in the star rankings, but this is a good one. This is a good one right here to say he can't track the ball. It's a high ball right here. That means he's he's got to be able to track the ball. He's got to you know adjust to the trajectory. He's got to assume where the trajectory is. And then he also has to have some sort of uh, feel to where the defenders are. So whether you go up with two hands or you go up and kind of the cradle catch or you go up and body catch it. And so his ability to track the deep ball uh, is something that comes natural to him. Now it's a skill that you can hone in and get better at, but a lot of kids in high school, because they play so much seven on seven and the passes are short and there's a lot of run out of the, after the catch, the deep ball and be able to be a good deep ball, 50, 50, uh, catch and this is actually 33 percent because it's not one-on-one -on -one, it's one-on-two yep. to be able to come up with that it's actually uh pretty impressive yeah and i like that he came down with the uh, the uh, free safety coming over i think number one here wants to lay a hit on him but 
I think Jacory here on this specific play, he just out jumps everybody. I mean, look how high he gets off of one foot. I mean, right. I don't know that that's awesome right there. Look at that height. And he just simply jumps over number one, that safety who I think was not looking for the ball and looking to lay, lay the wood in Jacory, but Jacory just kind of uses his athleticism and it shows you what kind of athlete he is. I wonder what kind of a high jumper he is if he ever tried right. it. But. Yeah, it looks like a high jump or a long jump. But again, yeah. you know, as much as we talk about his ability to track a deep ball, right, and make a play on the ball, it's number one's inability to track a deep ball and make a play on either the receiver or the, the ball right here. So he didn't, he didn't do anything except for got Randy Moss. And so that's a good thing for, for Barney is that he's able to get up and get the ball and make uh you know, 50, 50 catches. And this is another one right here. Uh, it's kind of a back shoulder deep fade. You know, the court is a pretty impressive throw by the quarterback from the yeah. opposite hash, but he won't throw this ball unless he has superior confidence that his receiver can come down with it. I mean, this is a, this is a long throw. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is a throw that where a lot of things can go wrong if there's safety coming over there or it gives the cornerback a little bit of time to adjust and make a play on the ball. But look where he catches it or look where he throws it. Look where he catches it right there. We're talking about adjusting and playing a deep ball. Again, it's a deep ball. And then look at him to get down, not one, but two feet down, yeah. um, which is obviously, you know, what you do at the professional level. So he's going, you know, a step further and. When he hits the ground, he cradles it. So that means he has strong hands and able to catch the ball, you know, and be tough with and not lose the ball and give it a give a chance to a ref make a call that it wasn't a, a complete pass. So right here, um, I like it. It's a good route right here, right? He eats up the coverage and he gets into the route very easily. It's a timing route, but it's also a timing route based on the athlete that he is, is they go up and they trust him to be tough and make these plays. Uh you throw it to a spot and tell the receiver. Uh, you know, Jacory, you know, Barney, you got to go make plays. And that's what he did right here. That's it's a it's an aggressive play goal. It's an aggressive throw. It's a timing throw. You're throwing to a spot, but it you can't call this play or execute this play without the confidence that he's going to come, you know, he's going to come down with it. And this is just an excellent play. And you see why he's a four four star recruit. Yep. He's uh with the number one or number 18 uh overall receiver in the whole nation. You see why uh Simpson who probably laid the foundation and then McGuire was able to go in and close in the combination mm -hmm. right there. So you're seeing why and how they're going around and getting inroads to these athletes and getting them to commit to Nebraska because of one, they know what they're looking for. Uh, two, they're scouting them correctly. And then three, they're, they're, you know, not just letting one guy recruit them. They're having two guys recruit them, but this guy right here is letting you know that he, you know, is going to have the whole staff excited based on these two plays that you see in this highlight tape. Love the footwork here, which is something, I mean, this is really, really good footwork. You can tell that he's like very focused and understands where he's at on the field. Just that corner right there. Boom. Boom. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's good in the NFL. Like you said, Jay, I just really love the concentration, the footwork. Again, I don't think you see that often at the high school level no, um, that, not, that has it looking that good. Right. That's a, that's what you call in the scouting department, body control. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, kind of like DeAndre Hopkins, the AOC that just got signed with the Tennessee Titans. That's what he made a lot of plays on body control, being able to track the ball. And this play right here, we're going right here is, is something where uh, the, I say this is a this is a Florida kid play right here. Right. Catch yeah. a little smoke screen and uh, hit the sidelines. I like the swag a little bit, letting yep. him know it must be a rivalry game. Mm -hmm. uh, probably let up off the gas a little bit too early, but he was tough enough to finish it right here. But look how he goes from one, first gear, second gear. He's gone right now. Yeah. So the the corner that was coming off that little bit of a stock block at the left side of that of that uh, play right there had the angle on him, right at the top of the screen. The corner uh, at the top of the screen, it's actually his play to make it. You know, I guess a you know a touchdown saving tackle it was a probably poor entry by the second guy, the alley player. The corner was unblocked, and so what he what happens is when these when he gets going so fast and he's so quick and he and he gets the fifth gear or it's fat top speed so quickly, it catches you by surprise right there. See that? Mm -hmm. And once he gets to the the numbers, uh, you know, it's most likely a touchdown. Obviously, this kid on the white team can run a little bit, uh, yeah. but so can Ja'Cory Barney. I know he, you know, it must have been a Friday night homecoming game. He wanted to, you know, profile a little bit. Uh, but right here, this is what you get right here. And he knows where he's going. And, and what I like is he, he faked one step. It's kind of almost like a dead leg, like he was going to the right sideline. Mm -hmm. and then hit it right up the middle 
and then he hit back to the sideline. So it lets you know his run after the catch is pretty good too. Uh, played a little quarterback, took some direct snaps at Palmetto. Obviously, when you're as athletic and you can move like Ja'Cory Barney, obviously you put the ball in his hands, and he took a little – I think this is a designed quarterback run, yeah. And then, um, obviously, just being an athlete. And like you said, Jay, I, I really like the uh, the burst. The 0-60 to 60 is pretty impressive with him. Right. Well, if you look right here, uh, there's, a, there's a free blocker. So you tell this is the quarterback's guy right here. Makes a miss. Makes one guy, he play, runs pretty physical, hits the sideline, almost goes, uh, you know, house call. The one thing I, I like about it is this coach, this, you know, his high school coach said, look, we got to get it to our playmaker yep. any way that we can. It's a design quarterback draw. And then one thing, look, we looked at him, we'll say, we said it earlier, he's a little bit slight of frame, mm -hmm. but he's a tough kid and he knows how to play football. So what that's let me know is he's not going to take a lot of direct shots. You know, it's kind of like, uh, obviously there's no comparison to him right now, but like Lamar Jackson, right. You know, uh, when he was in Louisville, he'd run the ball all the time and he's never was hurt, but he was always, he always breaking big runs. Well, he knows when to take a big hit and when not to take a big hit, but he also runs effectively enough and knows how to not take big hits. And this is where, what he does right here. Um, you know, hitting the sideline and, uh, and showing some pretty good speed right there. So look at, again, if, if I'm a coach and I'm looking at this, I'm looking at punt return ability or possibility. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, possibly even, you know, in, against some teams and some formations and some defensive personnel, putting him in the backfield a little bit, maybe not direct snap, but you have the ability to do different things with him. And so I think what, what, what I'm starting to see from Coach Rule and staff is that they're going to use their whole roster of players, right? They're not just going to be set on certain number of guys. And so you'll see a lot more guys probably get in the game at home games because away games, you have a shorter roster or a smaller roster. Mm -hmm. But when you can do multiple things like Barney can do, it'll get you on the field faster. Kick returns, punt returns, uh, kind of whether it's reverses, um, you can run a little RPO with him. You can do the, um, what, what they call the orbit uh, motion and then mm -hmm. get him in, get him a, a flare pass. And then he can play outside a receiver if you need to as well. So when you have players that can do multiple things, you put a tremendous amount of stress on the defense to be able to cover the whole field. It's not just a hundred yards, you know, obviously straightforward. It's 53 and a half sideline to sideline. And then they can use their speed to hit you with big plays. And so, uh, you know, he showed a playmaking ability and run after catch ability. If he caught a skinny post, if he caught a bang eight and, the safety takes a bad angle or misses a misses a tackle, he's gone because he he has the acceleration and in, in the run after catch ability to be an explosive player. So when you think about trying to get more explosive on offense, it's putting guys in situations to where you're advantageous. So that means a Barney against a linebacker like Jay Foreman, and then put them in space and let him go to work. But that's how you get more explosive on offense. And it's not just throwing the ball on nine routes. It's getting him in, in advantageous uh, positions throughout the field on both of the kind of outside on the sidelines and also in the middle. And sometimes, as you've seen right here in the in the backfield on a direct snap. Yeah, that is that is awesome stuff. And I think Nebraska got a really good one. It's going to be interested, interesting to see. I think with this one specifically, Ja'Cory Barney, other programs aren't going to stop recruiting him until sure. signing day. So it's just going to be really interesting to see if Nebraska can be able to hold on to him, Garrett McGuire hold on to him because – I mean, other other programs are looking at the same thing that we're looking at, and this guy can move. Um, he's just going to be sought after, I think. So right. the the race is on for signing day for Ja'Cory Barney. I'm really interested to see uh, Nebraska's ability, Garrett McGuire's ability to kind of hold on to this one. But, Jay, what have your early impressions been on um, Garrett McGuire? Uh, obviously, we know the yeah. storyline with him. Um, after he got hired, everybody was looking at – his age, 23 years old, and he's 24 right now. So yeah, um, yeah. just, you know, I think he's, he's shown that he can recruit. He can, he right. can be somebody who um, goes into a, goes into a living room, talks to parents. He doesn't have, he doesn't have the examples of sending people into the NFL yet. Um, but once he does, I think that's going to be the next step. Um, if he starts developing some of the guys in his own room to the next level, um, I think I think the sky's limit for somebody like uh, Garrett McGuire. What what are your early impressions on with him? Yeah, I, well, I think you, you know Matt Rule believes in him. I think he's young, and so obviously, look, he he's, he can't change his age, right? And so, 
Uh, everybody knows exactly, you know, his age and he knows his, his age and he knows he, he has a lot to, you know, approve. But the one thing that doesn't have an age limit, right? And it, it could be on the flip side. It, you know, you could say somebody's a little bit older, but, you know, Ed Ogeron is, a, is, is way older than him, one of the best recruiters out there. Recruiting comes down to getting to know the prospect and the parents and the situation, the landscape, right? And then also effort. And then also mm -hmm. believing in yourself. And so people pick up on that really, really quickly. And so I'm sure that's one of the things that was appealing to Coach Rule. They, I think they have a good system to where I call it a two-pronged attack, right? You got Simpson that's kind of yes. inroads into Florida where to go. Mm -hmm. He's kind of give you that credibility to get in there because recruiting Florida is different. You have to be in, and the high school coaches have to trust you in order to be successful recruiting there. So you got Simpson, that's a former coach there, former state champion. So he got yep. credibility there, mm -hmm. along with Garrett McGuire. It's allowed Garrett to, you know, flourish as a recruiter. Obviously, Nebraska has a commitment from Barney right now. They mm -hmm. won't, they won't stop recruiting him yes. um, themselves. And so they feel very comfortable with it. And I'm sure Barney does as well. Um, and so as far as Garrett McGuire's done, he's done, you know, I think he's, you know, exceeded expectations. I think everybody could make an excuse that he was young. And that's an easy, easy, uh, I guess, knock because that's the, that's the known. But what they didn't know or didn't respect that he would come in and work and be the coach every day that he needs to. And the good, I guess, what also a selling point is to the flip side is that these kids are viewing that they're going to go through this together and they trust him. And the kids on the team trust him right now on the roster. Uh, and some of the receivers that he's recruited and re recruited from the prior staff's commitments. Um, and then these new these new commitments as as they go along in the process, trust him uh, that he'll be their coach and coach him well. So uh, I think he's done a really good job and continue to do a good job because I think this whole staff understands that they have to recruit every single day, every single season uh, in order for Nebraska to get back to where they want to get him to. One last thing off to go off your um, <laughs> thought on kind of it being a two pronged attack with Phil Simpson being. Uh, maybe the guy that gets in there first and having Garrett come in and close. We saw that with Kiwan Lacey, the running back out of Texas. Right. It was actually Garrett McGuire, not EJ Barthel, who was the first to reach out and create a, a Nebraska relationship with Kiwan Lacey. Um, and once that happened, EJ Barthel comes in, he seals the deal. Um, and and now Kiwan Lacey is, is a Husker commit in the 2024 class. So Garrett McGuire is showing up in other ways, not just receiving, uh, not just receivers too. So really good stuff there, but Jay, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed this one with Ja'Cory Barney jr. Four-star right. receiver out of Palmetto high school in Miami, which again, I think that's, uh, Evan Cooper's alma mater as well. Uh, the DB's coach. Go. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Nebraska, they, they, they they want a foot in, um, Palmetto high school. Obviously there's a lot of good sure. talent coming out of there in that area, obviously. So Jay, good stuff. Let's do it again. Um, well, same time, uh, next week, uh, and we'll pick another recruit to do. This is, this has been fun, but, uh, for Jay Foreman, I am Steve Marek. And that was the black shirt breakdown, Ja'Cory, um, Barney junior style. Thanks. And we'll have a good one.